to uncover your heads. I mean, to cover your heads. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to stand and face Jerusalem and open up. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The mighty one of Jacob. The mighty one of Jacob. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness, answer me. And in thy righteousness. Enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man live and be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness in those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed with me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I move, I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as the thirstiest land. Selah. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down to the pit. I have read to you Psalms chapter 143, verses 1 through 7. May the Lord have the blessing in hearing, reading, and doing of his word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 First, I want to say praise to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone that is here in Jesus' name, as well as those watching on Facebook Live and also make, make them tune in on our YouTube channel. As, that, as always, it's a pleasure to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Today's lesson it is a, it's a basic lesson, but it's important, as most of these lessons that we do are, it's important to understand what it is that the Lord requires of us, and it's important for us to know exactly what we are doing and why we do it when we call ourselves servants of the Lord. So today's lesson, the name of it is, the title of the lesson is, The Law of the Lord is Perfect. The Law of the Lord is Perfect. Because his law is perfect. His law is absolutely perfect. It don't need no change. It don't need no correction. It don't need no addendums. It don't need no help from us. He created it perfect and it works just fine when it's followed. It's only when we get involved that things go into chaos. And hopefully, as this lesson progresses, we'll see and understand that. So let's, without further ado, let's get into this thing. Let's go in, let's, let's jump right into Psalm 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. <laughs> Psalm 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. All right, my brother, go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, mm -hmm. making wise the simple. The law of the Lord is perfect. If a thing is perfect, then why change it? What's the point in changing something that's perfect? If something is perfect, the only thing you can do to it is make it imperfect, right? So, I have an example. This cup. This cup is designed to do one thing. And it fulfills this draw perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. So if we do anything to this cup, we're going to diminish its capacity to do its job, right? Okay. 
This cup represents the law of the Lord. Okay? Now man gets involved and he starts poking holes in God's doctrine. He starts poking holes in man's in, in God's law. Okay? Cup ain't going to do what it was designed to do now, is it? It's going to leak water all over the place and you pour water or any kind of beverage in here, right? And it's going to be chaos. This is what happens when we mess with the law of God, the laws of God. It, get, it turns into chaos. And we can see that in everyday society. The law of the Lord says man should not lay with mankind, right? Not, not with man's law. Now we got chaos and confusion. Men don't know what bathroom to go in. Women go into the bathrooms confused and don't know what a man's doing in there. It's chaos. It's confusion. Makes no sense. So why mess with something that is perfect? God's law is designed to do one thing, and it does it perfect. So there's no point in changing it. Verse 8, come on. The statutes of the Lord are right, mm -hmm. rejoicing the heart. The, com the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The statutes of the Lord are right. Mm -hmm. His laws are right, and they're just. There's no unfairness in the Lord's laws. Not at all. Back in early, in the early uh, days of this country, we had things called Jim Crow laws and, and all these such things. They were not fair. Those laws were not fair. They were unequal. They didn't allow blacks to enter into, uh, you know, soup kitchens or things and eat with the regular people. They had to come in the back door. They had to use separate faucets, things like that. These, these things aren't fair. But God's laws don't distinguish amongst anyone. They don't discriminate anyone. They, one applies to all, right? <coughs> so the Lord's laws are right. It says, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. His laws are pure. They don't need any, they don't need any correction. They don't need any changing. They're enlightening the eyes. And if you pay attention to His laws, they will give you understanding. They will help you to know how to, how to proceed with your life, how to guide yourself. Verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, mm -hmm. Endure, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous all together. The fear of the Lord is clean. The law, the fear of the Lord is keeping His commandments. So the fear of the Lord is clean. His commandments are clean, enduring forever. In other words, you ain't getting rid of them. When something is forever, that means forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. They're true and righteous. They, they, they need no help. Verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, than much fine gold. Mm -hmm. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. More to be desired are they than gold. And that's what we should look at. That's, that's how we should look at this word. We should, we should want this word more than anything else. We should want this. We should want the knowledge and the understanding that this word has to offer us more than anything else. For one thing, his commandments are going to help you gain salvation, and that's what the, that's the whole point of everything that we do. We're trying to gain salvation, right? right. So it would behoove, behoove you to know his law and what he expects and requires of each and of every one of us. To the point that it's as one of this fine gold. Verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Mm -hmm. And in keeping them, there is great reward. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. This, these warnings, this is how you know not to do something you shouldn't be doing. Thou shalt not steal. How do you know not to steal except the law told you not to steal? It's a warning. In keeping them, there is great reward. Keeping in, this, keeping in the commandments will get you salvation will help to get you salvation. Verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Mm -hmm. Cleanse thou me from, my, from, my, from secret faults. Who can understand the Lord's errors? Which of us is smart enough to understand his errors? Not me. I don't even know when he makes an error. That's how far above my pay grade he is. If the Lord made an error, I don't know about it. There's a, there's an, there's a saying in, in music. Like I listen to, I listen to all types of music. Um, I probably like rock and roll a little bit more than anything else. But uh, I, 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 I like good guitarists. 
And one of my favorite guitars is from Guns N' Roses. His name is Slash. Now, I like the way he plays. He seems like a humble guy, but uh, there's a there's a saying in, there's a saying in music: if you make a mistake, do it twice, and nobody will ever know it was a mistake. So, how would we, since you know, we're most of us who aren't guitar players, don't have any idea when those guys are running through those riffs, don't have any idea when they mess up. It just sounds like music to us. It just sounds like a bunch of notes being played real fast. But who knows how many mistakes they made in that in those riffs? We don't. We have no idea because we're not astute <coughs> musicians, right? So when something is technical, you have a hard time understanding, you know, the the inner workings of it. And it's the same with the law. It's the same with the Lord. We have no idea, you know, of his the extent of his knowledge and when or where he may or may not have made a mistake. So. The point is, it's, it's it, it, on us, it's not, we may, we may not understand, understand things out of ignorance, and that's not, and I'm not talking about stupidity. There's a difference between ignorance and stupidity. We don't understand when a, when a, when a mistake is made in music out of ignorance, not stupidity, okay? You can't, you can't take apart a laptop computer and snatch out a wire, put it to get back together, and expect it to work, right? Because we have we have ignorance of the of the inner workings of a laptop, so we cannot understand the Lord if we can't understand errors if the Lord made any. It says, "Cleanse thou me from secret faults." Verse thirteen. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Mm -hmm. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Okay, so going back to what I just said, he said, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins, sins will willingly sinning. Keep yourself from that. And let them not have dominion over me. We should be able to resist temptation. We should be able to fight off the urge and to, to sin, especially willingly. Especially when we know the consequences of it. And we should not allow sin to have dominion over us. Yeah. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, mm -hmm. my strength and my redeemer. Mm -hmm. Let the words of my mouth and my meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let's go to Romans 7. Yeah. Romans 7. And verse 12. The Lord is so far above us, it is crazy for us to even think that He needs correction or help with anything He said concerning His laws or anything else for that matter. Verse, uh, verse 12. Romans 7 and verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore the law is holy, uh -huh. and the commandment holy, uh -huh. and just, and uh -huh. good. That's right. Wherefore the law is holy, it is just, and it is good. The law is perfect. What do we need to change it for? What need is there of any change if the law is holy, just, and good? Let's say the Lord makes, this the Lord makes a white garment. Okay, let's pretend like this is a white garment. Right? If we have, if our hands are filthy, which, which our hands are, really are, we're filthy, because our righteousness is filthy rags to the Lord. If our hands are filthy, what, what do we do to this if we, if we touch it with our filthy hands? We, we, make it, we make this filthy, right? This is the law of the Lord. What do we got any business putting our filthy hands on the law of the Lord? We got no right changing anything that the law said. The law told us, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. What gives us any right to think that we can change that? The Lord said he gave us a dietary law. What gave us any right to think that man could change that? It makes no sense, does it? The law, wherefore the law is holy, the commandment holy, and just and good. 1 Timothy 1. 
1 Timothy 1. Timothy 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. First Timothy 1, we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Alright, go ahead. Now the end of the commandment is charity, mm -hmm. out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience. In a faith of fame. Okay, he said, now the end of the commandment is charity. Is charity. I'm sorry. So see, right there, Brother Travis, I got you. He said, the end of the commandment. We don't have to do the commandments no more, right? That's the end of the commandment. Ain't that what it said? Now the end of the commandment is charity? So let's, So all we need to do is have charity, right? Oh, stop this. Stop this. The end of, you, you're not going to get rid of the, the commandments. Like Sister Crystal says, don't play with me, Trey. <laughs> Don't play with me. Just stop that noise. We're not going to get rid of the commandment. He says the end of the ch the the end of the blah, blah, blah. Take your time. the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and out of faith. The Romans Romans um, I think it's 13, 13 and verse eight. He says it says. Uh, Owe no man anything. Owe no man anything, but love is one. Love one another, and um, love one another. For he, for he that loveth one, yeah, for he that one, loveth one another, uh, has fulfilled the law. He that loveth one another has fulfilled, has fulfilled the law. So, if you, so what he's saying here, if you love one another, then you have fulfilled the law. That's the end of the law. The end that the law has been fulfilled. Not that it is the end of the commandments. It's the end of the law. He's what he's saying here is if you have if you have charity and you are showing love to one another, then you have fulfilled the you have fulfilled the commandment. Not that you have ended the commandments or ended the law. Verse six. From which some have served have turned aside unto vain jangling. Okay, so from which some have swerved and have turned aside. So some, because they don't have charity, some of us in Israel don't have charity, have turned turned aside from this and have it says and have, have turned aside unto vain jang vain jangling. So what's he talking about here? Uh, some talk a big game, oh, you know, when the brother or sister is down and out. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll help you do this. We'll help you do that. You know, and uh, uh, I'll be more than happy to put in the first dime. But when the time comes, uh, you know, say, hey, brother, sister, I need help. Start looking away. Hope they don't see me. Hope, hope they, don't, uh, they don't come past me for nothing. Vain jangling. You did all that talking with your lips, but when it comes time to help out, you done turned aside. Verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, mm -hmm. understanding neither what they say nor what of they affirm. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor where of they affirm. So they don't they, they want to be teachers of the law, want to tell you what the what the, what the book says, but they don't have no understanding. And they don't they don't live by what they teach. They don't even live by what they teach. Some of them will tell you, uh, yeah, the, uh, the commandments say don't have a graven image. And at the same time, they're wearing a cross around their neck. Don't make no sense. Want to be teachers of the law, but they ain't got no understanding, neither of what they say, nor whereof they affirm. Verse 8. But we know that the law is good. The law is what? The law is good. Mm -hmm. If a man uses it lawfully. If a man uses it lawfully. <clears throat> The law is good if a man use it lawfully. Verse 9. Knowing this, mm -hmm. that the law is not made for a righteous man. Okay, so the law is not made for a righteous man. So does that mean we aren't under the law? That we don't have to worry about the law? The law doesn't, pay, doesn't, doesn't apply to us? What does that mean? But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. So in order for us to be good... We got to use the law lawfully. They turned around and said, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So who is the law made for? Go ahead. 
but for the lawless mm -hmm. and disobedient, mm -hmm. for the ungodly and for sinners, mm -hmm. for unholy and profane, for murderers mm -hmm. of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for manslayers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. So this, that's who the law is made for. Those who are disobedient. Those who are ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers and, mur and, and, and murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for mass. That's who the law is made for. Example, if we write a law, that's, if we write a law for people who are not sitting in chairs, that law doesn't, that, that law doesn't apply to you all. Why? Because you're sitting in chairs, so you can't violate the law. The law is written for me, who is not sitting in a chair. I'm not. I'm violating the law. So you are right. You are righteous by sitting in the chairs. I am unrighteous for not sitting in the chair. So the law was written for me. Verse. That's it. Okay, you finish that. So the law. We see that the God's law is good if a man uses it lawfully. 2 Timothy 19. We need one verse here, right? 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And we're going to pick it up at verse 19. I'm sorry, huh? Okay, yeah, all right. 2 Timothy 2, I'm sorry, verse 19. 2 Timothy 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 19. All right, go ahead. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured. He established this law. He established it sure. He established it perfect. The law was perfect. It doesn't need, it, it doesn't need any help. It stands, on his, it stands on its own. Matter of fact, the Lord said, if I needed a drink of water, I wouldn't even tell you. If I was hungry, I wouldn't even let you know. So obviously, he don't need our help for nothing, right? So this, this thing, this foundation, God stands assured, having his seal, his approval. He approves of this law. He made the law and he approves of it. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord said, if ye love me, what? Keep my Keep commandments. My commandments. What? So that's how, that's, how he, that's how he knows who we are, who are his. If you love him, keep his commandments. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So if you are naming the name of Christ, if you're claiming Christ, you claim to be a Christian, you got to depart from sin, right? Mm -hmm. Depart from sin. So what is sin? Let's go to 1 John 3 and verse 4. Keep a bookmark here because we're coming right back. Keep a bookmark here, we're coming right back. 1 John 3 and 4 because he said, depart from iniquity. Which is sin, so now we got to find sin. First John 3 and verse 4. Go ahead. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Mm -hmm. For sin is the transgression for of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if you transgress the law, then you are committing sin. And we are to depart from sin. Let's go back to first, uh, 2 Timothy. Go back to 2 Timothy and pick it up at verse 20. Pick it up in verse 20. Go ahead. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. He, he said, but in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth. Okay? So even in, in, there, in every house, you're going to have some people who are good at keeping the commandments. You're going to have some that are, you know, a little bit less good at it. They struggle with it. 
We have, to, we have to learn to purge ourselves from sin, brothers and sisters. We have to, we have to learn to keep his commandments. Uh, keep going. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, mm -hmm. sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also useful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and then that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. He said, if a man therefore purge himself from these, <laughs> talking about sin and iniquity, dishonor, <laughs> he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So, if you're able to purge yourself from sin, if you're able to keep your hands from doing any sin, then you can become sanctified and, the, and meet for the master's use. The Lord can use you then. The Lord can't use you if you're out there acting crazy. You're out there at, talking crazy. The Lord can't use you. So purge yourself from, from sin and be prepared unto every good work. Verse 22, flee also yourself, flee also youthful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord, call, call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But the foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. So don't even, don't even bother with the foolish questions. Don't even bother with that. <clears throat> Work on those things that, that, need, that, that, that need to be worked on. And the, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. And this is something that we all need to work on when we're dealing with each other. It's something we have to work on as a man and wife in the home, dealing each other with patience. Have to teach one another. Gentle unto all men, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Did you read that? <laughs> I saw him look up. I must, I must overstep myself. <laughs> go ahead, bro. Oh, yeah, go, well, go ahead then. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. Mm -hmm. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle to all men, after teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, preadventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, Okay, so, so in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, instructing those who don't know the commandments, instructing them who are, are doing things against the commandments to their own hurt. Help instruct them. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to acknowledge in the word of God. Verse 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him and his will. So that they may recover themselves, so they can save their selves, so they can save their soul alive, if they can keep their hands from sin. So we need to understand these commandments so that we can instruct others how to keep these commandments so that they can save themselves. This was our job. This is what this was our charge in the first place. He said the snare of the devil. So we can recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Because the devil's out there telling them, ye shall not surely die. <laughs> He's out there telling them, you don't have to keep the fourth commandment. You don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to remember the Sabbath day. You can go any day you want to go. That's what the devil's telling them. You can, you can eat pork and swine and catfish and shrimp and all that stuff. You can eat that. You shall not surely die. You can, you can pick up sticks on the Sabbath. Really? I saw where the, where the Lord stoned the man to death for doing that. You gotta know these commandments, understand them. The Lord is not playing. He will kill you. Okay, so we finished that, right? All right. 2 Timothy, go down into 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to pick up verse 16. Verse 16, go ahead. 
All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Such is some of the scriptures. All scriptures. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God. Keep going. And it's profitable, and it's profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, mm -hmm. for correction, mm -hmm. for instruction in the righteous. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And that's something that we all need. Instruction in righteousness. Because we can't do it on our own. We can't figure this thing out on our own. We need instruction in righteousness. We need to know when somebody is telling us you can, you can keep uh, any day as a Sabbath. We need to know that's wrong. We need to tell them, stop. Don't play with me, Trey. That's what we need to say to them. <laughs> so, instructions in righteousness. All right? So we need to know how to follow instructions, right? right. All right. So how good are you at following instructions? So-so? All right, we're going to find out. We got to exercise in instructions. I want everybody to participate. Now, when he gives this to you, turn the paper over. Everybody listen now. Turn the paper over. Don't look at it. Don't read none of the instructions. I want everybody to start at the same time, okay? Temptation to look at it. Instructions, everybody has a pen, right? Yeah. Okay. Now you may let me make sure I ain't got no extra instructions for you. Okay, so now you may turn it over and follow the instructions as quickly as possible. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, what? I just need a pen. <laughs> Is that a pen? That's only in it. I'm trying to follow instructions. You gonna give me a pencil? Something already. Nah. Has everybody completed it? Mm -hmm. We got a few still going. Oh, oh, come on, man. <laughs> you come in late, disrupting class, and then I'm leaving, throwing papers all over my floor. Who's still doing it? Who's still going? Yep. Got one still going at it. So what did we learn? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we didn't learn anything? Well, wow. all the instructions. I learned that. I learned number 10. You need it all. Follow you need it all. That's what I learned. I learned how to read. I learned how to read. <laughs> the first is more fun to actually do it. The first instruction. First read what? All oh. instructions. Carefully. And keep your mm. pen in your hand at all okay. times. So first, read all instructions carefully. So it would behoove you, if you're told to read all of something first, all right. to read it all, right? right? And then you get to the end, the last instruction that says, simply hold your pen in hand, because the first instruction told you, keep your pen in your hand at all times, right? Right. OK? Simply hold your pen and do not follow any of the instructions two through nine and wait for the ex exercise to end. Right. Right. Perfect. So we learned that what happens when we start messing with God's law, right? Things get in chaos because we don't follow instructions. We don't follow them. And it, I mean, this, this exercise is meant to show you a lot of things. It, it's, 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 let you, it's meant to show you that we are lax in, on following God's instructions. It's also meant to show you that sometimes we are looking too hard at the instructions. Yes. We're so caught up in all of the detail. Write your name. Full, write your full name. Now, I, didn't do, I could have said name, but I threw in full name at the top right hand corner in the back side of this paper. Very precise, very, very precise instructions, right? We get so caught up in that that we forget that the most important things, verses 1 and 10, are the most important things in the whole piece of paper, right? So we gotta we gotta pay attention to what we're reading. We gotta understand what it is that we're reading. We can't just jump into a thing and blow through it and expect to get understanding and expect to you know live according to what the Lord is wanting us to see and do. 
We got to think about this thing. We got to use our heads. So hopefully, this little exercise will help you to see and, and think about things a little bit differently when it comes to God's laws and what He has in store out of this book, what He has in store for us. <laughs> so let's get back to the let's get back to the book. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Really? Proverbs 3. Because we need to learn how to follow instructions. Israel shows a bad, a bad history a bad track record with following God's instructions. We tend to want to make up our own way of doing something. And when we do that, we end up in chaos. Proverbs 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Go ahead. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, mm -hmm. and lean not unto thy own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. With all, all thy heart, with all your mind, trust in what the Lord tells you. Trust in what He says. When He tells you to remember to keep the Sabbath day holy, trust in that. And go full-heartedly with that. Don't be wavered. Don't, don't let somebody who comes along with some false doctrine that sounds good deter you from what you know thus saith the Lord. Don't be turned. He said... And lean not on thine own understanding. Verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. and he shall direct thy path. In all thy ways acknowledge the Lord. And he shall direct your paths. Let the Lord direct your paths. Let his commandments direct your paths. Verse, verse uh, uh, 7. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Mm -hmm. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord which means keep his commandments and depart from evil. Which means keep your hands from sin. Verse 8. It shall be health. It shall be health to thy navel and moral to thy bone. It shall be health to thy navel and moral and moral to thy <coughs> moral to thy bones. It's healthy for you to keep God's commandments. Very healthy. It'll keep you alive. Literally. So lean not on your own understanding and hold this thing dear to you. Now, we see, we just had a good example of how, how bad Israel is, how bad we are about following the instructions. So let's look at an example and see somebody else who was bad at following the instructions. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15. First Samuel 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Yeah, we're going to read it all, that's right. <laughs> First Samuel 1, uh, 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And we're going to see how serious is the Lord about following His instructions and keeping His commandments. How serious is He? Verse, 15, verse 1, 15 and 1, go ahead. Samuel also said unto Saul, mm -hmm. The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Okay. Thus to the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalekite did to Israel, and how he lay wait for him in that way when he came up from Egypt. He so the Lord, remember, we, we, we was we talking about, uh, it was, uh, what lesson was that? I think it was the regathering of Israel. And the Lord was reminding them about the silver and the gold that uh, Nebuchadnezzar and them were, were in the in the in the palace and drinking too and all that, and how the Lord was having a grudge. Well, here here again, this is a grudge the Lord is having here in verse two. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. This happened 420 plus years before this. When the Lord said, the Lord said to uh, 
to Moses, he said, uh, rehearse it in Joshua's ears and let him know that uh, I will utterly put or I will utterly remove the Amaleks from the, from under heaven. So that that's what he told that's what he told uh, that's what he told Moses in uh, I believe it's Exodus 17. We you, you can go read it on your own time. I believe it's at the end of Exodus 17. He told he told uh, Moses that he promised that he was going to remove the Amalekites from under heaven. So here the Lord is remembering remembering his grudge against Amalek. Verse three. Now go and smite Amalek and other destroy all that they have, mm -hmm. and spare them not. But say, but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Okay, so he's he's pretty specific here, isn't he? He says, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare not spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. He didn't leave nothing out, did he? He's being very precise. Now all, now seems to hear, all Saul has to do is follow instructions, right? right? Keep going. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in, in Telam, 200,000 footmen and, and 10,000 men of Judah. Mm -hmm. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart. Get ye down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. Mm -hmm. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kittites departed from among the Amalekites. Okay, so so far so good. Saul went down there and he came upon the Kittites. And you remember the Kittites uh, did, did right? And he gave them a chance to get out. He didn't want to destroy them with the Amalekites. So he gave them a chance to get out. So the Kittites departed from among the Amalekites. Verse 7. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havla until the comest to shore that is over against Egypt. Okay, so Saul smote the Amalekites from Havla until, until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt. Okay, so so far so good. He's done smote the, the, the Amalekites. Verse 8. And he took Agad, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Uh-oh. I don't think he said do that, did he? I didn't, I didn't read nowhere earlier where he said take the king Agag alive. Looks like he might have made a mistake. Verse 9. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatness and the lamb and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them but everything that was vile and refused they, that they destroyed utterly. Oh, so now they're picking and choosing what commandments they can follow. Don't that sound familiar? Yeah. Picking and choosing. The Lord was pretty clear. He said, He said, this, He said, Go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Spare them not, will slay both man and woman, infant, suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. But now, they come up on this stuff and they see all this fat stuff. They see all these, uh, these, uh, you know, all the bling, the, the new shoes, these Jordans. They can, I can't, they can't destroy that. So they got to keep some of that, right? <laughs> the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good. They saved all that, would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and, re and refused, that they destroyed. Verse 10. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, Okay, so now they get the phone call. <laughs> so now the phone call comes. And what do he say? It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. Because he's hard-headed. Because <laughs> Israel's hard-headed. It repented. That's a, that's a strong thing he just said there. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. Because he said he got to, he anointed Saul in the first place. And the, and the you know the Lord don't like to do that. He ain't putting away. Keep going. For he has turned back from following me mm -hmm. and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. He said, He has turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. So he he didn't follow the instruction of the Lord. He didn't he didn't read the instruction clearly before he acted. Or even worse yet, he read the instructions and he refused it. Yeah. It's got to be one or the other. 
And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night long. Verse 12. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is going about, and passed on, and going down to Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Bless be thou of the Lord, and I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Okay, so Samuel catches up to Saul in Gilgal, and uh, Saul sees Samuel and says, Hey, hey man, I done accomplished all that the Lord asked. He, he says, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandments of the Lord. He's all bragging and proud, right? Verse 14. And Samuel said, What well, means then this bleeding of the sheep? He said, Man, what, what you mean you done accomplished all that, all that the Lord has said? You done hit his commandments. I, I can't even hear you because the sheep are too loud. <laughs> the, the sheep are making too much noise. What you mean you to you to perform the perform the commandment of the Lord? Keep going. And Samuel said, "What well, meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear?" Yeah, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear. The sheep and the oxen making so much noise, he, he can't even he can't even hear. It. Can't even hear Saul. Keep going. And Saul said, "They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God." And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Okay, so now, now we, so, some clicked in Saul's mind. Uh oh, maybe I better throw, I better throw Israel under the bus. He said, and Saul said, they have brought them, brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice, and then he tried to throw a little, you know, a little honey on it. They, we did, they did this because they want to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. So it was the people that did it, but they had good intentions. They wanted, they wanted to sacrifice unto the Lord, thy God. Verse 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. Okay, so Samuel said, Look here, man. I got I to gotta go call the Lord and find out what he's going to say about this. So he goes on. Verse 17. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? Mm -hmm. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Mm -hmm. The Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go, and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Mm -hmm. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? So what, so what are you doing, Saul? You, you know what the Lord said. You clearly heard what the Lord said, and you... You, you decide to do something else? You decide to fly up on the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord? So Samuel needs an answer. He wants an answer for this. Verse 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agath, the king of Malachi, the king of Amalek, the Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. So what's that look like? Looks to me like he's poking holes in the cup. That's kind of what it looks like to me. He's he finding loopholes. and He's trying to find loopholes in what the Lord said, what the Lord commanded. Keep going. For the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the thing which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. But he ain't going to give it up easy. He's going he to continue to try to throw Israel under the bus. Go ahead. And Samuel said, Has the Lord... As great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. So, so has the Lord, would the Lord rather have you sacrificing animals and, and giving up, uh, you know, offerings and doing those things? Would he, have, would he rather you do that or would he rather you obey his commandments and do exactly what he said? Of course, he'd rather have you obeying, obeying his commandments. He said in Psalms, uh, uh, burn offerings and sacrifices I desire I would not. He didn't want that. That's not what he wants for us. Verse 23. Middle of 22. I'm sorry. Middle of 22. <laughs> Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rent. Because obeying is better than sacrifice. That's why God gave me keep me on track. I appreciate that. <laughs> Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of ram. So it is better to hearken to the, the voice of the Lord than to do sacrifice. The sacrifice was meant to 
kind of repay the Lord for when you done messed up. So it's better if you can avoid the messing up in the first place. Verse 23. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Because it could only be one or two reasons why Saul didn't obey the voice of the Lord. One, he didn't hear the instructions. Or two, he was rebelling against the Lord. And this, this is as bad a sin as, as witchcraft, it says. Keep going. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Keep going. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Oh, so he determined, he says a plain here, he rejected the word of the Lord. It wasn't because Saul didn't hear the instructions, it's because he rejected the Lord's instructions. Verse 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Mm -hmm. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in thy words, because I fear the people and obey their voice. Okay, cause, so Samuel's, Samuel's not backing down. Not backing down, and Saul is starting to he's, he's starting to see the severeness of his his error here. He's starting to see just how serious his mistake is. So now he says, "For now I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and Thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice." So he's still throwing Israel under the bus, though. But keep going. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me. That I may worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, please, Lord, he wants me. Please, Lord, forgive me my sins. Oh, yes. help me, Jesus, Lord. Help me, help me Jesus. <laughs> Keep going. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king of Israel. Uh oh, man, that's that's pretty strong. That's pretty strong. And this, you know. This applies to us as well in life. Uh, you know, we can apply this to ourselves in life. We know the Lord has told us to, to keep ourselves from sin. He, he tells us keep the Sabbath. To, we know he's told us not to celebrate Christmas and things like that. We got this truth, and hopefully we brought this thing to, you know, friends and family members that are closest to us. But what, what happens when they reject what thus said the Lord? Are we going we gonna to keep them, you know, keep our arms around them and hold tight to them and reject what the Lord says? Or we're going to stay tight to what the Lord says and reject what they say. You've got to reject that lifestyle. You've got to reject all that that does not come from what thus said the Lord. Sam is going to turn now because for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord hath rejected thee. Or have I gone too far? No. The Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. Woo! He just took the kingship. He just took the kingdom out of Saul's hand. So just how serious is following the Lord's commandments? Just how serious is following his instructions? Pretty serious, huh? Man just lost his lost his right to be king because he didn't follow simple instructions. And he can't put it off on Israel. They, if, he, if the king said don't do it, they would have not done it. He can't put it off on them. That's why the Lord's not going to accept no excuses. He ain't going to accept no, these excuses. Verse uh, 27. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid, uh, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Mm -hmm. So he done rent the, he says he ripped the kingdom out of his hand and gave it to his neighbor. And, and threw a little salt on the wound that is better than thou. <laughs> Verse 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie, nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Mm. Because the Lord, the strength of Israel, that's who he's talking about, the Lord here. He said he will not lie, nor repent. For he is not a man that should repent. Keep going. Then he said, I have sinned. Yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, help me, he's begging. <laughs> Keep going. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately. And Agag said, 
Surely the bitterness of death is past. <laughs> so come before Agag, and this lets you know, uh, you know, he, he, Agag knew Samuel's reputation. He, 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 know who, he knows who Samuel is, and he knows that Samuel is going to follow the Lord's instructions to a T. And just like uh, other places when Samuel came into that town, I can't remember the name right off the top of my head, but the first thing they asked him when Samuel showed up on the scene is, have you come peaceably? Yeah. <laughs> because they know he ain't going to play. Sam is going to follow. Sam is going to follow these instructions. Keep going. Verse thirty-three. And Samuel said, "As thy sword have made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women." Mm -hmm. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. And he chopped him up. Samuel chopped him up with the sword before the Lord. Now that's fulfilling the commandment. Keep going. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to, to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, for the Lord repented that he had made Saul king of Israel. So we see the serious consequences to Saul for not, not following instructions. And this, at this point, this was, there was nothing but a, a straight decline excuse me, a straight decline for Saul uh, from this point on. It just all went downhill from this point on to the point where he, he ended up turning crazy. He, I mean, he, the Lord took his spirit from him and he did, he just turned completely crazy. It had to be, had to be, uh, had to be uh, calmed by David's music. David playing that, that instrument, I can't remember what it was called. The harp. The harp. Was it a harp? A liar? A liar. I mean, it's the same thing, man. So he, so, uh, so David went, so, so Saul went completely crazy from this point forward. All right. First John, first John five. So we see clearly how important following God's instructions are, how important following the commandments are. So, so why don't we want to keep the commandments? What is it, what is it that's in us that, that, that makes us not want to keep the commandments? Are they too hard? Is it too hard to keep the commandments? Is it too much work to keep the commandments? Is it too much of a burden on us to keep His commandments? 1 John 5, verse 2. Go ahead. But this we know, that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. His commandments what? Are not grievous. They are not grievous. His commandments are not too hard to keep. So there's really no excuse for us not to keep them. It's not hard for you to sit down in that chairs in these chairs, right? right? You got no problem doing that. <coughs> so anybody, to, anybody makes an excuse. I mean, it might get a little com uncomfortable after a while, but you can sit in the chair. You can keep God's commandments. They're not. They're not hard. It's not uncomfortable. He said, "By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments." So this is how we know we love and we are children of God is when we keep His commandments. So he, see, Brother Trav, it's all about love. It's all love, love, love. All you got to do is, is love God. You ain't got to keep them commandments, right? Stop it. Don't play with me, Trey. That's what, you, that's what you need to say. That's what you need to tell them. It's all about love. We don't have to keep them commandments no more, them old, them old, uh, old Testament rules and laws. We just need to love one another. Hug, hug one another. That's all we need. Uh, Mark, Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Let's see if all we need is love. <laughs> Matthew 22. And we'll pick it up in verse 37. All we need is love. Love, love, love. Is that a Beatles song? Black Eyed Peas. 
first time. <laughs> Matthew 22, 37. Go ahead. Jesus, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. See, he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and, all, and, and with all thy mind. Love, 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 going all around. Keep going. This is the first and great commandment. See, this is the first great commandment. That's it. That's all we need. The first and great commandment. Just love the Lord. Just love, love, love. Keep going. And the second is like unto it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. Two commandments, he said. Two commandments. Love the Lord thy God and love thy neighbor as thyself. That's all you need. Love, love, love. See, all the rest of them laws don't, don't uh, you know, don't com thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not do this, and thou shalt not do... You don't need all that. He said all you got to do is love the Lord thy God and, and uh, love thy neighbor as thyself, right? Stop it. <laughs> don't play with me, Trey. <laughs> I'm not going for that. It's not what he's talking about here. Keep going. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, see, Brother Trav, he said on these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. He said hang the law and hang the prophets. You ain't got to do none of the commandments. So now we hang the law and the prophets all together, putting them on the tree and nailing them to the cross. Is that, is that what, he's, what he's saying here? No. no, he's not saying that at all. He's not saying that even in the least bit. So let's turn, let's find out what is he saying here? Were we done there? Yeah. Okay, let's find out what is he saying. Mark 12. Mark 12. And pick it up at verse 28. Mark 12 and 28. Come on. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, ask him, which is the first commandment of all? Okay, so he asked, which is the first commandment of all? Which is the greatest commandment, Lord? Out of the ten, which is the greatest commandment? Okay, that's what he wants to know. Which one is the one, is the one that's going to get me into heaven? Go ahead. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandment is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay, so he said the first of all the commandments is hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Keep going. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Mm -hmm. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. <coughs> so, <coughs> he's letting you know, he's, he's, he's what he's doing here is he's not talking about doing away with any commandments. He's referring you, what the Lord, what Jesus here is doing is he's referring you to the Ten Commandments. Because the Ten Commandments can be broken down into two categories. It lets you know, one, how to deal with God, and two, how to deal with man. That's what he's talking about here. So let's, start, let's deal with the first one. Let's deal with the first one. He said, did you finish 30? He said, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So this is the first of the two splitting of the commandments. So keep a bookmark here, because we're going to be back and forth. We're going to go to Exodus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. The first commandment is thou, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. So how do we do that? How do we love the Lord thy God with all our heart, and all our soul, and all our mind? Verse 20, check Exodus 20, chapter 20, verse 1. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, mm -hmm. I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Introducing himself. Go ahead. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, mm -hmm. or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. He said, Thou shalt not make any, un any graven images or anything like them in the heavens or in the earth, and thou shalt not bow themselves. 
bow yourselves down to them. Pretty plain and simple instruction. If you ask me, I don't know how you messed that up. Unless you're not reading the instructions. Or you reject them. Or you reject them. Verse 6. And so I mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. How do you love the Lord? How do you show you love the Lord? By keeping his commandments. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. They shall, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. When you accept the covenant, you become a, the Lord adopts you, and you become Israel, right? So you've accepted his name. So once you accept his name, you don't go off and start acting crazy and doing everything opposite of what he wants as somebody that represents his name. That's what it means to take the Lord's name in vain. You don't want to do that. You accept this covenant, you need to live by the covenant. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger with, that is within thy gates. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and holiday. Okay, so clearly we see the Lord gave these instructions on how to deal with him. He said, He said, I am the Lord thy God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images. You should not bow yourself down to them graven images. You should, he said, and thou shalt. Not take the name of the Lord of God, thy God in vain, and remember to keep the seventh, the seventh day holy. The Sabbath day, remember the Sabbath day. He gave four commandments, let you know, the first four commandments are to let you know how to deal with Him. How to serve and love Him. That's what those first four commandments do. And this is the greatest commandment that Jesus is talking about. So now let's go back to Mark 12. Mark 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 31, right? So the first four commandments tell us how to deal with the Lord. Verse 31, come on. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. There is none other commandment greater than these. So see, my brother, all you got to do is just love the Lord and the God. Love the Lord thy God and uh, love one another, your neighbors, and, and that's, that's, that's it. That's, no, stop. Stop. And the second is like, is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. So let's take a look at the last six commandments and see if those apply to this second commandment. Exodus 20, and now pick it up at verse 12. Exodus 20 and verse 12. Go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbor. Now, two great commandments, love the, God, love the Lord thy God, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Two great commandments. And if you're keeping these ten commandments, you fall right in place with these two great commandments that Jesus was talking about. He wasn't excluding nary one of these ten commandments. Not a single one. He just made it simple for you to understand. If you love the Lord thy God, you're going you're gonna to fall right in these first, first four commandments by keeping them. If you love your neighbor, you're going to fall right in place with these last six. Do any of these, and these are gonna, these are naturally gonna apply to keep it to uh, to to handling to your handling your neighbor. 
Go back to Mark. Go back to Mark 12. Keep your book, Mark. Back to Mark 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 34. No, 32. 12 and 32. Go ahead. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is no other but he. Oh, so he's, he's, telling, he's telling Jesus, he, you know, you're right, Jesus. You, 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 you said right. Keep going. And to love him with all thy heart, with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all who burnt offerings and sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not from thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any questions. And no man asked him, no man after that durst ask him any questions. So if you go back to uh, if you go back to Matthew 12 and See, Jesus, 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 uh, Jesus got smart with him. He started asking the questions. So, who do you think is the uh, is the Christ? And what and what say? Who is the Father? Or what? What do you say exactly? Who is who is the Son of Man? Who do you think of the Christ? And who is the Son of Man? And uh, He asks him, he says, what think you the Christ and whose son is he? So he starts asking these hard questions. That's why they decide they're going to back off him and leave him alone. Because he, 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 Jesus gets hard on him. Starts putting them hard questions to him. They, they never ask him no more questions after that. Leave that man alone. So, now we have understanding of what he's talking about here. You're not going to do away with the law. But on all these all these uh, all these hang these two things hang the law of the prophet on these two great commandments he said okay so where are we at verse or hey, go back to Exodus 20 go back to Exodus 20 Exodus 20 so we're not going to do away with the law and we find out exactly what the law how the law helps us it helps us to understand how to worship the Lord, and it also helps us to understand how to deal with our fellow man. So what is it, what is wrong with us that we don't want to follow the law? What is wrong with us that we have such a hard time keeping the law? So we're going to pick it up in verse 18, and we can kind of see, we can kind of see here what's wrong with us. Verse 18, go ahead. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Okay, so we know where we're at. The Lord's given the Ten Commandments. He's up there, and the, he says that, and the, all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpets. The Lord's at the top of the mountain there, and the Lord's at the top of the of the mountain, and the, and the mountains is thundering and fire, lightning and, and making all kinds of, kinds of noise and trumpets are blowing and he's hearing all this. They're, all Israel is watching this and hearing all this. And they, they're scared and they, it says they removed and stood afar off. Verse, verse 19. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. So they tell Moses, Look God, look, look Moses, you, you speak to us. You speak to us, and don't don't uh, don't let don't let God speak to us, because He's making way too much. He, so He's He's like a continual dripping of water. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, God. 
<laughs> you have to get that stop. That will drive everybody nuts. I don't know anybody can take that. So, anyway, verse 18. All the people saw the thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and all this big spectacle. And the Lord is just, he's there giving all the Ten Commandments. And then they go to Moses. And what do they tell Moses? Man, he sure is loud, isn't he? They didn't hear nothing the Lord was saying. They're too concerned about all the thunderings and lightnings, and they run off. Lord, man, Lord, he, the Lord is loud. You, you, you talk to us. We don't want to hear nothing he has to say. And this is what's wrong with us. We're too busy, caught up in everything around us, caught up in everything. We don't even notice and hear what the Lord has to say. Too busy, too busy doing our own thing to read what thus said the Lord. And we're just not listening. We're just not listening. We're paying attention to the light show and the thunder and the water dripping. <laughs> <laughs> Whose head did it drip on first? Man, that's why I moved. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered. <laughs> I was wondering. Okay, so. Uh, Psalm, you finish that? No, you didn't. Verse 20. Yeah. 20. Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. So, he, Moses come trying to tell them, Look, don't fear not, for God has come to prove you. This book, is, this book is here to prove us. This word is to prove us. That the fear may be before your faces. So we, we, we read things in here, the terrible things that happen, and we learn to fear the Lord. Because this will help us that we sin not. It will help us to sin not. So it's a healthy fear. You should have a healthy fear of the Lord. Because I'm, I'm afraid, brothers and sisters, we've lost that fear of God. Referring back to the other lesson I did. We've lost that fear of God. So we don't know what it is to fear when we transgress His law. Mark, now let's go to Psalm, Psalm 111. Psalm 111. The Lord came to prove Israel and to show them and to fear the fear of the Lord by keeping his commandments will keep you from sin. Psalm 111, verse 1. Go ahead. Praise you the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm sorry, I got excited. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Mm -hmm. The works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all of them that have pleasure therein. The works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all of them that have pleasure in them. Now when the Lord does something, He does it right. He don't need no help. Keep going. His work is honorable and glorious. And His righteousness endures forever. Endures forever. His righteousness endures forever. Verse 4. He has made His wonderful works to be remembered. Mm -hmm. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Yes, sir. He have given meat unto them that fear him. He will, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. He said he hath given meat to them that fear him. That he will be ever mindful of his covenant. So if you, you're keeping his commandment his Lord, and, and his, his laws, he put that hedge of protection around you and, keep you and and help to keep you in the way that he will have you walk. So that you can get that that, that uh, reward that he's mindful of, of his covenant. Verse 6. He has shown his people the power of his works, mm -hmm. that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Mm -hmm. The works of his hands are, are uh, the works of his hands are verity and judgment. Mm -hmm. All his commandments are sure. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All the commandments are sure. They, they are sure. They are perfect. They are perfect. The laws of the Lord are perfect. They don't need no correction. They don't need our help. The Lord doesn't need our help. Keep going. They stand fast forever. They stand fast forever. And ever. 
and are done in the truth and uprightness. They are the stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and in uprightness. They were created in truth and they are and they are righteous. They are done in uprightness. Keep going. He sent redemption unto his people. Mm -hmm. He have commanded his covenant forever. Mm -hmm. Holy and reverend is his name. Holy and reverend is his name. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, sir. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Oh, yes. He says, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To fear the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do what? Keep his commandments. Keep going. His praise endureth his, forever. His praise endureth forever. His praise endureth forever. Psalm 113. His law is perfect and his law is sure. Psalm 113, verse 1. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. <coughs> praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Mm -hmm. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Yes. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above all above the heavens. Mm -hmm. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He risen up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill, mm -hmm. that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Mm -hmm. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Psalm... 117. Psalm 117. Praise the Lord God. He keeps saying that. I thought that's what we're supposed to do. Repeat after him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Psalm 117. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All ye nations, praise him. <laughs> All ye people. For his mercy kindness is great toward us. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Mm -hmm. The truth. What is the truth? His word. Mm -hmm. His word endureth forever. Mm -hmm. It don't need our help. What else? Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, last place. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Psalm 146, last place. 146, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1. 146, and verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, O my soul. Mm -hmm. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will sing praises to my God while I have any being. Mm -hmm. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. He said, while I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praise unto God while I have any being. And this is, this is what we, we need to do, brothers and sisters. We need to appreciate life that the Lord has, has blessed us with. We need to look around us. And, and recognize the blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon us and praise His name for it. Amen. Praise the Lord for all the blessings that we have. It's not always bad times. It's not always bad. There's some good times mixed in there with the bad. Praise the Lord for it. He said, put your trust in, put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Don't put your trust in man who's trying to tell you that you don't have to keep the seven day holy. Don't put your trust in that man. Don't put no trust in the man that tells you you can eat anything you want, just pray over it. That's not what the book says. You can't read that. Don't put your trust in the man that says it's okay to worship Christmas and do Easter and all that stuff. Can't read none of that. You should not surely die. Yes, you will. Yes, you will die. <laughs> A very unpleasant death. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Verse 4. His breath goeth forth. He returned to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. His breath goes forth. That man, don't put your trust in that man. When, his, when it's his time, his breath goes forth. In other words, the other scripture says his spirit goes back to him that gave it. Goes back to him. And where does his body go? It, it goes back to the earth and it perishes right along with his thoughts. 
So don't put your trust in that man. Put your trust in what thus said the Lord. That's where you put your trust. Verse 5. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, mm -hmm. whose hope is in the Lord his God. That's, that's who you put your trust in. That's who you put your hope in. The God of Jacob. Happy, happy, he, happy is he that hath God of Jacob for his help. Verse 6. Which made heaven and earth, the mm -hmm. sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever. Which keepeth truth forever. Verse 7. <coughs> which execute judgment for the oppressed. Mm -hmm. Which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoner. The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He, rebuilt, he relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall reign forever, even the God, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise you, the Lord. Praise, Praise you, the Lord. Lord. So, in conclusion, brothers and sisters, don't put your trust in man that tells you to replace something that is perfect with something that is imperfect. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word, and hope you got some understanding in this name. Okay, so, yes, sir. I don't mean to be blasphemous, but you say, we say, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Close the door. Praise.